with the force there's an emphasis on feelings like what do your feelings tell you or feel my intention feel where i'm going to strike you feel what your enemy is intending but also it's a little bit guns don't kill people people kill people do we count the clone wars when the jedi are fighting against droids and sensing the intention of these mechanical beings yeah. maybe it's because droids are people Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. You found the lost holocron, an ancient artifact of lore and legends from a galaxy far, far away. Each transmission of the lost holocron, you will join an episodic discussion of media from the Star Wars universe. And just so you know, guys, we're not running at a hundred percent. I'm gonna break the immersion. We record this podcast late at night. Most of us do anyway. And I'm not running at 100%, so you don't get any special intro today. We will okay. be your guides. <laughs> Tim. Hi. I'm Kyle. <laughs> Scott's here. I'm sleepy too. And here's Stuart. <laughs> midday. Sunny, sunny midday. <laughs> <laughs> Other side of the world. <laughs> Live from Japan. <laughs> we'll be covering material up to and including chapter uh, two of the Dark Horse Rising series. What? Stuart. Two whole chapters? Right. Two chapters in Baby. Basically, yeah. almost done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stuart, what happened so far? All right. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Stuart, you're supposed to be the one on the at 100%. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on here? Yeah, no. Uh, um, Mr. Sunshine. How yeah. do you guys feel about tunics? Tunics? Mm. Yeah. I could wear one. Stylish. Yeah. Oh, I used to have Comfy. an actual tunic from... Uh, I think Sir Lancelot from uh, Monty Python. Oh, what? Saying. Yeah. You know the term gird your loins? The one with Yes. I learned what that means recently. That's pretty fun. I tried to gird my loins recently, yeah. and uh, I don't know how they did it, so I'm going to need to look up a tutorial on loin girding. Oh, Whoa. yeah. What, do, what don't you get about it? Uh, so I've got this. <laughs> I'm wearing it right now. Right. Uh, a very long tunic, right? And girding is pulling it up from the bottom and tying it in a way that you're mm -hmm. ready for combat. Right. Nice. So you, you're supposed to tuck it from the, the front end to the back yeah. and like pull it up lower. around and tie it. And you pull it around and then tie, tie it in the, the front, front into the back mm -hmm. and then tie it at the front. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe it's not loose enough for that then. Possibly. Also, real quick while we're on the term, hoisted by your own petard. It's not what I thought it meant either. What's a <laughs> petard? Well, but, uh, but that's what I, that's the thing is uh, I thought a batard was like suspenders or something like that, but apparently mm -hmm. it's a device to blow open doors. Okay. It would. <laughs> so when you're hoisted by your own batard, it's when you, the device fails and it blows backwards at you. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, so see what happened in this chapter. Who got hoisted <laughs> by their own batard? <laughs> well, actually, uh, so the story so far. Um, is that the New Republic is facing logistical strain to fulfill their promises to new member worlds. They've been stripping warships uh, to pick up the slack. While escaping entanglement with Imperial Star Destroyer Chimera, Luke Skywalker's X-Wing is crippled. Grand Admiral Thrawn puts out a bounty for Skywalker's capture, knowing that his hyperspace motivator will fail, stranding him in deep space. After the events on Merka, Luke, Han, and Lando make it in time to Slewis Van as Thrawn's assault begins. With so many warships running material through the shipyards, Thrawn uses stolen mole miners in an attempt to hijack them. Having stolen them from Lando's mining operation on Naklon, Lando uses his override codes to scupper the whole enterprise. With the capital ships all but ruined, the Imperials pull out, leaving the shipyard in disarray. <laughs> Scott, what happened in Chapter 2? All right, Chapter 2. Yes, we're actually in Chapter 2. It's the we one after one. It's the one after one. And like Kyle said, we're almost done. With hours ticking away since Admiral Akbar's arrest, Luke's status as a civilian has grounded him at Sluice Van. His X-Wing has no priority to receive Sluice repairs. And despite Wedge tactically offering up his own X-Wing, Wedge would face a court-martial to hand over military property to a civilian. Lando, given his stable condition, is similarly unlikely to see medical care soon. As he talks to Luke, he notices the signature scent of an old associate lingering on Luke's clothing, professional ship thief Niles Farrier. Using a Jedi memory-enhancing technique, Luke leads Lando in pursuit of Farrier. After a brief firefight, they convince Farrier and his crew to leave Sluice Van for another mark. 
receiving intel on an imperial bounty for capture warships, as well as slicer codes that might be used to sortily expedite Luke's repairs. I I need that memory enhancing trick. Oh god! The yes. one. Yeah, that would be so incredible. Uh, I've been plagued by a horrible memory uh, since I can remember. <laughs> Ooh, ADHD. Yep. Love Yay. It. Thanks, ADHD. <laughs> We get forgetfulness, insomnia, Kyle forgetting to unmute himself. So many wonderful things from it. <laughs> Speaking of memory tricks, Lando is like smelled smoke right. on Luke's sleeve of somebody who walked three meters past him and was just like, <laughs> I know exactly who this is. <laughs> Nose of a bloodhound. Yeah. Well, isn't smell what best triggers human memory? Am I remembering uh, that correctly? Yeah. yeah. yeah That's supposedly. fair. But so it's somebody who was smoking something who walked three meters past him. And, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know this is. And probably stunk up the whole place. Uh, right. Just hot boxing it in there. <laughs> <laughs> he also had like some spice as well. Yeah. So, oh, like, yeah, he did have spice. He was using drugs and smoking, and that smell we got on Luke from three meters away. Just Don't you do that in a medical him. day? <laughs> <laughs> I was under the impression that uh, Luke was already off on and on his way at the end of the last book. No, so he and the book finished right before Han said, all right, I'm taking off. We're just going to take care of your X-Wing. Mm. We'll see you at the other side, right? And said, okay, we're going to do that in, within 10 hours. So even before... Yeah. Han left is when the book finished. Okay. So it seems that things have changed ever so slightly, but you know, there's there's a little bit of a disconnect between Wedge saying, I'm going to scrap my own X Wing to repair yours myself, to the Sluisi people <laughs> won't, won't do it for us. Yeah. But I like this. Like, <laughs> it, it, it didn't turn out the way that they expected. And, mm -hmm. and now red tape is completely <laughs> tripping everybody up. Gotta love that yeah. red tape. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's nice to see plot armor not being a thing. Like, yeah, yeah just yeah. mundane shit is getting yeah. them. We thought it would be so easy. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, the bureaucracy strikes again. <laughs> Speaking of mm. plot armor, I thought it was very interesting that Luke is considered a civilian. Yeah, yeah. Like he's got no military pension. He's not like retired at all. He's just like as though he's been dishonorably discharged and has no benefits after being in the military. <laughs> well, I mean, even so, I thought he still holds some sort of power on government. Like he still, I, I, I assumed he had some connection or authority still. Yeah, being the fact that people that he, people he's walking around and people are just like. Luke Skywalker, <laughs> go to the back of line like everyone else. <laughs> yeah. right. I don't know. Even though he's Space Pope, it's like, how is he getting a paycheck? You know? Maybe he's freelancing as Space Pope and he doesn't Maybe. actually hold a, <laughs> hold a permanent position. Or it's like, you know, every time they go out for dinner, he's like, oh, guys, I left my wallet at home. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, I learned recently popes get their name changed when they become pope. Oh. They get they get their name. They don't choose to, or like right. What? There's a list of pre-approved names that you pick from. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my god. So what would Luke change his to? Uh, Pope mm. Francis. <laughs> Jedi Master Pope Francis. <laughs> Pope Luke Skywalker the Fourteenth. Yeah, I, 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 we were we were weird uh, aside. I just I thought that was weird, but yeah, I don't know. Just the fact that he is. Just you know, he, he's just like I have no power here. They they, they won't let me do anything. It's, yeah. it's crazy. But then it does seem to hold some sway after the firefight that they're like, "Oh, this is Luke Skywalker, Jedi, who took down Darth Vader," and the other guys <laughs> just comes out with like squinty eyes saying, <laughs> "Jedi powers are greatly <laughs> over <laughs> what, what is it, overstated." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're threatening me with right now. <laughs> I, I think that means that towards my theory where it's like people are aware that Jedi do exist, 
but they think of them more as highly trained guards mm. and not as magical sorcerers. Who yeah, have or just power. like overblown. Yeah, just like yeah. overblown, over exaggerated. Like, oh, uh, whatever. You're just a fancy guy with a with like a shiny weapon. I like yeah. this theory. Yeah, <laughs> because essentially, from an outsider, any lay person would not know. Would, would not see a Jedi's full abilities. They just see mm. them walking around, doing whatever. So essentially, they are people who are grabbed at a very young age to be trained heavily and show up when they're needed, which just sounds yeah. like special ops. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's true. And it would be like kind of a boogeyman as well of like, ooh, the Jedi are going to come get you. They're going to read your mind and tell you everything you did wrong oh yeah so it would be that kind of like it's kind of kind of magic overstated magic yeah and their most distinguished like thing is a weapon that anyone can use right Mm. i like i like this angle yeah it's a good one so you i'd have people on one side that are like it's all hokey religions and Mm -hmm. overstated superpowers magic and then people on the other side that are scared of this that the yeah. boogeyman is literally coming out of the closet right now yeah it's yeah. great and, and also with everything there's always going to be rumors of what the extent of people with power with, with actual power can also mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. like like yeah i'm sure some people have like seeing Jedi use their mind to lift things up and then you know someone sees that and then they tell their friend like I watched them grab someone by the brain and rip it out. <laughs> <laughs> you should show them that memory enhancement technique. That'll convince everyone. Speaking of that memory enhancement thing, like I don't have this and I've talked with other people about it of like, what is your memory like? And Luke has, <laughs> as it's described in this chapter is completely foreign to me that there is a video Ooh. in his mind of events that happen and like i don't even have an imagination uh Mm. that projects images i have an imagination Mm. that projects like fuzzy clouds of feelings and stuff and my memory is a lot like that as well i don't see anything like remembering back stuff i'm like okay these the this is the impression cloud that comes over me and i experience it not so much as like a 3D thing moving through time, but also I experience the progression of things as a kind of sense as well. Mm. So him mm. doing this memory technique and like looking back through his mind, I'm like, wow, that's a very different kind of memory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys experience like videographic mm-hmm. memory? Mine's more yeah. like snapshots. Yes. Um, mm. Yeah. Pictures. A slideshow. <laughs> Very specific things will um, stand out to me. Mm. And oftentimes it's just like a detail of a scene. Um, but mm. um, I can recall certain things pretty easily, like lightsaber props, or mm. um, <laughs> I can visualize things really easily as well. So, mm, like yeah. imagining scenes and things happening. And some of my memories I've noticed are actually like reconstructions from another perspective so i think i've just taken my memories and created my own visualization of them Mm, in certain aspects which i wonder if that's what other people do because human memory is not very reliable no especially mine not at all (laughs) actually i was listening to (laughs) i was listening to an interview recently that was um uh that human memory is a compression Right, and every time that we uh, go back to read the information in that memory location file, I think they're calling it traces mm-hmm. at the moment, is that every time they follow that trace, the the areas of the brain that are involved in imagination are actually highly correlated with memory because mm. the you are remembering something and your brain is filling out a lot of the details based on the compression of that information yeah interesting one thing i heard recently too is that your brain when you recall memories it's like you know imagine like seeing somebody's face 
And it's like every time you recall that person's face, you're not recalling the original memory. You're recalling the last time you remembered it. Mm, yeah. I really enjoyed the explanation that I heard recently that a memory is fresh ink on a piece of paper. And every time you try to remember it, you take another piece of paper and press it on it yeah. and pull it off. Yeah. And so every time that ink gets a little less and less there. Interesting. Mm. Right. Yeah, certainly memories aren't as solid or unmoving as uh, we'd like to think. And right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know which Scott cool. we're recording this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and look, he made it. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> no, it's just, you know, it's when I was, when I was in my like teenage years, my dad would have me like do responsibilities around the house. And for some reason I would do it every, or I, I was supposed to do it every day. Mm. For some reason, I just could not remember that it was just part of my routine. Okay. It's six o'clock. I gotta go outside and check the pool, whatever, you know, that was, I had to take care of the pool, check the chlorine levels and, and everything else. I could not remember it. And, you know, that was part of the ADHD growing up that I had no idea I, I had back then. Mm. And a lot of my memory issues, I think were, associated with that as well and even to this day now you know 20 years later i'm i i don't know it's just i have the hardest time remembering even the simplest things i forget things all the time at work <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm feeling like great. like the human brain isn't designed to remember stuff though the human brain is designed to solve problems and mm -hmm. not remember very specific details and once you've got systems and stuff that's the thing to be uh to be working on like how good are your skills at performing these tasks not how good are you at remembering what these tasks are i think one of the best inventions that we ever had is writing that we can oh, put yeah. these things down and have a solid state memory and our soft memory in our skulls i always refer to my phone as like my, my second brain because that's the way that I treat it. It remembers the specifics and I'm just, I get to offload that and be less stressed about what do I have to remember right now? What am I doing tomorrow? All right. That's in my second brain. I don't need my first yeah. brain, my soft brain, my squishy brain to be holding all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. My wife will tell me, you know, having a task to do, you know, within a couple of days or like, like an appointment for the kids or whatever. And she'll be like, you know, don't forget, you got to go pick up the kid early. And I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> you know, mm. <laughs> even, even though we had that conversation the day before. Yeah. Understandable. I've had so many moments like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the plague. <laughs> <laughs> it's the plague of ADHD. This honestly might be the best force power I have seen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, the other thing, I don't know how you guys are with like, you know, learning new things, but that was always something that I struggled with too. And and if I, I always told myself, you know, it's like, if I could have any superpower, it would be to like learn anything like almost immediately because right, I yeah, always yeah. had so much trouble learning new things because it's just, I think that's also associated with my memory issues. For me, it depends on my level of interest. <laughs> that too, for me. Yeah. As mm, well, yeah. I, or I have to have some kind of motivation around it. Like mm -hmm. if I, I, I want to do something just to like, like if my competitive side comes out, then I might learn something faster. <laughs> yeah. I'm a very visual hands-on learner. If you try to explain something to me, I'm not going to get it. You're going to have yeah. to do it. Tell me 13 more times. Mm -hmm. Same. I, I hate really phone calls at work. <laughs> I don't understand concepts. Yeah. 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 I, I work at, I work on a lot of die cast and uh stamping dies and there was a thing that i've learned to do and i was told to do how to do it like 14 times mm -hmm. and i never understood it he came over and showed me how to do it once and i got it never needed yep. to know it again mm -hmm. and i still know how to do it i'm pretty much the same i've heard that um like learning styles are uh pretty much a sham really and so mm -hmm. i'm wondering if like it's just that people are very bad at actually teaching things. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the explanation just not sinking in. It's just that the explanation 
doesn't fit with the way that you understand it at the time. So I think that's why seeing things happen is a lot more effective for a lot of people because like it's not explanations just don't paint that picture for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on some of the projects I do, I have to pass off the project file to an audio person for them to master it. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for years and I would always forget something and I'd always have to be reminded of how to do it. But mm. just recently they showed me what it looks like on their end. And so now I understand and remember everything uh, I have to do. Uh, yeah. Cause I have context for everything now mm -hmm. instead of just yeah. tasks. Yeah. And I feel like that's why a lot of people hate their bosses because their bosses don't understand the tasks that they're asking on the other end. Like Scott, you said people were asking for a quarter that was just like, physically impossible on mm -hmm. on the tasks that they were asking you for because like yeah they don't know what it is that they're actually asking for god <laughs> that applies to so many things in my job <laughs> yeah I, I hate when people do that like at my work yeah. um there's there was one day he, there was a bunch of new numbers posted on machines and it was the goal for the day like that's how much mm -hmm. you want to get to and like eight of them like it was physically impossible. Like mm. it does not run that fast. If I even if I didn't go to lunch, would not mm. hit that number. Yeah. And it's like this was made by somebody who's never walked on this <laughs> factory floor. No. <laughs> yeah. I know. I feel like that with a lot of jobs. Yeah. Can you get me this whole documentary in five hours? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nine women can't have a baby in a month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you know what what it is frustrating to me about uh, the description of lando in this <laughs> ever since he's been injured is that the first time that we saw it it said that uh lando had made his last gamble and i was like that's very black and white <laughs> yeah fade to black lando <laughs> is dead <laughs> and then the following chapters we get oh you know he's quite severely injured so we can't handle this on the falcon we need to get him to a proper medical facility <laughs> and then <laughs> in this chapter he's just got a bit of strap on his arm he's not bleeding out at all and all he <laughs> needs is like this pain number thing to hold against his arm I was like what 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 went wrong here in <laughs> describing like, what happened maybe they I, can't pull shrapnel out on the falcon maybe that's here's, just here's what it thing. is i think mm. zan wanted a little more suspense than he was willing to dish out <laughs> right <laughs> right but it's like if he's willing if he's if he's well enough to like go into this potential firefight again you know how badly mm. injured is he where he has to go to like a specialized medical facility where he can't just like get a quick band aid and you know, it sounds like that all he needs is something like quick little patch up. Why can't you yeah. get that anywhere? I wonder if like this came down from above to say, No, you can't hurt Lando. <laughs> 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 As he, he when he submitted that chapter, they were like, All right, but next chapter you have to walk it back. <laughs> so it's like, Okay, all right. Uh he's he needs special medical attention. He can't he can't be fixed on the Falcon. And then the, the, the notes came back from the editor again and was like, mm, yeah, we're going to have to revise this again. And it's down to shrapnel. Because like, I feel like, like you said, maybe they can't fit, pull out shrapnel on the Falcon. Yeah, that's plausible enough to me. Yeah. And I don't know if I just didn't pick up on it because I feel like Kyle mentioned during that thing that he had a bunch of shrapnel in him. And so... Was it shrapnel? I thought it was just splinters, but... That doesn't sound like something I say. <laughs> splinters yeah so somebody said something about splinters or shrapnel or something that was like that and i feel like if they dug into that and said like oh we just can't perform any surgeries to take this out but we need to find a facility to take those things out then... unless hear me out maybe the splinters if it's just simple splinters maybe it's like the pressure treated wood where it's highly toxic because i knew a guy who actually had um his dad went to the ER for uh, like a splinter, but it was pressurized treated wood, pressure treated wood. And he mm. nearly died because of a splinter because it was the pressure treated wood. It was highly toxic chemicals. Oh, on it. Yeah. One more theory. <laughs> uh huh. That chapter 
was from Nando's perspective, when he was just being really dramatic about how mad he was. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's all caught up with me. Yeah, I could accept that. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's beyond Lando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lando does seem a little bit like a drama queen. He does. He does, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> him and his winning smile. And his stock market manipulation. Yeah. <laughs> How is that legal? He's stockpiling isn't Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's that's something like the, the price was like artificially inflated or something. Yeah, like hefrarium or hefrium or something. That, it's on like a Bitcoin. <laughs> <He's... Right>. <laughs> <laughs> the mole miners are really just Bitcoin miners. Because <laughs> yeah, diamond mines do this as well and they manipulate the... we need to start a cryptocurrency and call it that <laughs> yeah. mole yeah. miners or mole coin mole coin hefrium, mole... hefrium? Oh. yeah yeah we'll so... be stepping back into uh people referring to jedi as boogeymen you know what really mm. are boogeymen the fucking beings whose bodies absorb the light around them what the hell yeah are the fucking oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. horrible yeah. sounding don't that want them cool. anywhere near me <laughs> Yeah, I'm a very, I'm a very open-minded person. I don't want something that absorbs light to come near me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Did anybody catch the name? No, he said Wraith, but I don't remember the actual name. I'll grab it. I'll grab it. Because we've got Verpine here is the insectoid. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird of Lando to say a tame Verpine. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Tell us what you really think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Here it is. They call themselves Defel. Defel. Mm. Absorb all visible light. Yeah, I liked the description of them doing that. Yeah, yeah. and I like the explanation of like the evolutionary reason why they do that. An evolved survival mechanism. Yeah. Because yeah, I could imagine that happening. Mm -hmm. That you'd just have to see them in infrared or something. Oh, does that mean that Thrawn can see these guys? And <laughs> oh, ooh. Maybe he knows everything about their culture, too, just by looking at them. <laughs> right, there's a good thing. They a ton of electricity because they don't use it. Yeah. How, how did you read that Verpine comment? Tame, tame Verpine? Yeah, it was like, hmm. it seemed like a very weird distinction to put on like a humanoid being. Mm. So I don't know what they're typically like them but at the same time it like luke saying oh yeah they're like so good with technology to me was kind of the same energy as oh asians are so good at math you know <laughs> right the stereotype. yeah yeah because it's weird to say that like he was tame as though they're like fiercely independent or not because it also describes them as being the the ones who helped admiral akbar design the b-wing starfighter oh yeah yeah. Which <laughs> I feel like the B Wing is a bit of like a shock T kind of thing. Like she's <laughs> right. got so many deaths in yeah. <laughs> in this universe and there are so many different origin stories for the B Wing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say I like the Rebels version better. The Rebels version yeah. was really cool. They just find this weird eccentric guy <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And Hera is Hera finds it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. It, it's yeah. very eccentric and unusual design, but it's one of my favorites. I think it's completely badass. It's a cool mm. ship. Also, fun fact: in Kotor, there are weapons named Verpine. Oh that's yeah, like a, the Verpine, Verpine droid carbon? disruptor. Um, that's one I remember. Yeah. There's probably a Verpine shield as well. You think they were made yeah, by yeah. Verpine? Is that is that why they call them that? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking now. <laughs> Well, let's have a look. What do they look like? I remember seeing an image, and I don't remember where, but it was like an insectoid um, Jedi, kind of like in a battle pose, hosing, holding like a green lightsaber, and I'm wondering if that's the same species. Oh, here's what they look like. There's a canon like, article for them. Yeah, it's pretty short, but... <laughs> Although these verpines don't look short. Yeah, they look pretty... Oh, I guess... Yeah, I was going to say, like he doesn't look particularly strong... But yeah, they that's what got him on for stealing the ship, not for not not to be muscle in the 
Although, right. yeah, because even Luke says they're supposed to be really good at like fixing things or working with like yeah. electronics or something. And even this Legends article says they have a technological aptitude, and like mm-hmm. that's really annoying to me. That just feels yeah. very D and D. Yeah, it reminds me of the uh, alien species from Ben Ten that can form to technology. <laughs> Mm. I don't know, what don't you like about that, Tim? It feels like it doesn't have room for individuality. Mm. Mm. That's what I don't like about it. I, I, it's fine if a culture is known for something to me, but when you start making it a species thing, then that does not feel very good. Mm. Yeah, It's pretty unrealistic to me. I think I think it's also the fact that it's just a more specific thing, technology in like over just in general intelligence. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's another good way to put it. Like there's a distinction as to the skill. Uh, okay, so you would be more okay with it if it was uh, that they were just highly intelligent creatures that their yeah, average they, IQ was higher than they got better than brains than us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But you don't think that their brain could be configured in a way that gives them more aptitude for technology or specific what, types of technology what would that look like it'd be like if i referred to somebody as smart as somebody who's really good at fixing phones <laughs> how would a brain evolve to be better at with technology i mean it could be as simple as maybe their bodies handle sitting at a computer desk for long periods of time better than humans i don't know <laughs> yeah or they mm. could like you know, reproduce really fast so that their offspring like evolve really fast to learn things like that. Yeah. You know, human brains have not evolved to be very scientific either, but science was something that we had to, because the human brain has a lot of like heuristics built into it to, to make certain judgments in order to keep us alive. Yeah. We have a lot of survival instincts even still. So, I'm wondering if under different evolutionary pressures that a brain would be more suited for scientific like thinking or, you know, technological thinking. Cause like, there's no doubt that um, maybe like ants are more suited to building certain kinds of structures. Mm-hmm. Right. But they're biologically designed to make their nests in that way so does that go further or is that limited to that kind of like instinctual they don't know that they're building nests they're just following their biological right. programming you know or it's like when they link their bodies together to build a bridge or something it's like that's just they don't know you know they don't conscientiously do that they're just doing it no yeah but I, also, I think um, a lot of times, I mean, it, this isn't the first time I've heard of a species in media that's good with technology, but most of the time, it's because that species is technology-based. Mm, right, right. Like, um, like like I mentioned with Upgrade from Ben 10, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's partially technology. It merges with machines that it fixes. Or yeah. um, if the, if you've ever played Fast with the Night, there's a species called the NG, which are part mm-hmm. machine, and like they will meld their body with technology to diagnose what's wrong with it. Hmm. So these Verkline could be like transhumanists in that way. <laughs> we need a better word than transhumanist for semi-artificial life forms. They're Borg-like. I mean, maybe it's just also the fact that they're insectoid. Mm-hmm. Like, I mm-hmm. guess I'm just not seeing a connection between that and technology either. Because yeah. what you're mentioning, Kyle, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, when your stuff fails, you get a bug in your system, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> so it would be better if they disrupted technology really well. <laughs> like they emit an electromagnetic field that just messes up technology. <laughs> to be fair, if you know how to break something you probably know how it works very well yeah yeah we'll force it together somehow yeah how did you guys feel about the description of the force in this chapter because i know that particularly tim you said at the end of the last book like 
you were looking forward to more force stuff in this compared to the last book where the, the Salamiri were there to block out that kind of thing. How do you feel the description as it comes back in this chapter? Uh, um, cause I quite liked the description where it said that it was like a mental spotlight highlighting the oh, okay. attacks coming towards him and how he needed to move his lightsaber and letting that flow through him. Oh, I like the description of the force being something that flows and, mm. um, controls and it feels exactly why Kreia would hate it. <laughs> I, I like that idea with it because I see the light side of the force as kind of like accepting what you, what your limitations are. And I think mm -hmm. once you accept those and let go of attachment to outcomes that you don't really have much control over, then you um, achieve greater ability. And in star Wars, that becomes an actual like physical ability and strength. Mm. And so I like this description through that lens quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I remember this description being something in the previous book as well when Luke was training, how he just kind of went into a flow state. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Scott? How do you feel about, did you get good force feels from the, <laughs> the descriptions in this chapter? Luke held his ground, feeling the force flowing into him and out through his arms evoking an odd sort of tunnel vision effect that turned mental spotlights on the attack itself and relative darkness on everything else. Lando, half crouched directly behind him, was only a hazy sense in the back of his mind. The rest mm -hmm. of Ferrier's people were even dimmer. Setting his teeth firmly together, letting the Force control his defense, he kept his eyes moving around the corridor, alert for new threats. It's kind of weird because like, when you describe that, it's almost like Lando's more situationally aware than somebody with the, the Force, and the Force should enhance your situational awareness, not give you tunnel vision. Oh, that is a good point. To me, I, yeah. I interpreted that as um, it's enhancing these things that it's seeing as causing threat, and so if something new came out that would cause threat, it would kind of like have that 3d effect of like it jumps out from the from the landscape a little harder than stuff just in the background so the, like the small details are disappearing but any kind of threat gets like amplified in that kind of i don't know force vision threat vision or, or mm -hmm. whatever we want to hmm. describe this as yeah i'm actually yeah. not sure how i feel about it now thinking through that way because I feel like it should just be a greater general awareness mm. and not necessarily something that kind of like highlights things for you. It shouldn't be a uh, witcher vision. <laughs> witcher vision. <laughs> <laughs> What's witcher vision? Detective mode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in a few video games, the witcher or the Batman games, there's like basically a button you hold where the world gets darker around you, but the things that are important at the moment get highlighted for you. But isn't that the way that it should be? Like, it's not important that, like, what is the specific texture of the ground or what colors are there on these things? The important thing is the the force is trying to enhance your survivability mm -hmm. in these situations. So anything that mm -hmm. is coming out for survival is enhanced and everything else kind of, like, softens i don't think that it, like completely fades away it's just this like okay creating contrast a high contrast environment for things that the force or possibly you deem important okay that does sound pretty congruent with mindfulness as well mm -hmm. yeah. and the focus that comes from that for, for me it's i think it's more of a when that happens in video games, it's like, yeah, I get it. It's a video game. We're supposed to, it's supposed to highlight the things. And as far as this and the force, for, the force is just kind of telling you what's good and bad. Mm. does seem a very how does it know kind of thing. But again, it's a story. If the force is just telling you what's important, it just seems like it seems like too much for me, uh, personally. Um like in a video game, yeah, I'm cool with it because I'm playing a video game. I'm trying to get level. But if the Force just knows, mm. it, like, it makes Jedi feel less like people, more like tools. 
They're like a tool of the force. Is that what we're kind of thinking of? <laughs> yeah. Less yeah. Eastern religion, more Western religion. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because if 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 it is a more if it is tunnel vision, then yeah, you're it's you're you're doing less work. But if you have a greater sense of all around you, and it's up to you to decide and see what is the danger, then it feels like there's more agency in the story. The Holy Spirit is telling you to raise your lightsaber here to block the splash of bolt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a crack in this wall. That means you should put a bomb here. <laughs> <laughs> this door is slightly brighter than that one. So said, or this piece of bricks on the wall. That means it's a secret area. Yeah. <laughs> this door is red. That means it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> All these books are poorly drawn in this scene, except for this one specifically, which looks like it's going to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you saying all this, Kyle, also makes me feel like is the force only a combat thing because if you don't have control over it and the only thing that the force enhances is kind of like threats in the environment then that mm. makes jedi a lot less like peacekeepers mm, yeah yeah less peacekeepers and more knights guardians yeah knights yeah, yeah. right right jedi knights and... <laughs> 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 I mean, they are knights. Yeah, like they are yeah. like that's yeah, like ultimately that's what they were meant to be originally knights, which were they're sent to keep the peace, but in a threatening way. Like you yeah. were you, like you, you got the knights before you got the armies to show up. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of like how I feel. Like it's a little bit hypocritical to call police officers, peace officers, you yeah. know, when they're carrying all this military style, or, you know. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. a bit of a and misnomer. That, yeah. That feels very, again, with Tim going back to the less Eastern and more Western, the Western was in forces, right? But the, yeah. the, the samurai class that Jedi are supposed to be based off were supposed to be the philosophers, they spent yeah. their time reading poetry, doing art, and engaging in military combat. So I guess that's why I feel like everything should be more enhanced if you're letting the force flow through you instead. Because mm. it's not that you're having things highlighted. It's you have a greater awareness of your environment, so you can already see the threats. Mm. My thought on that is that Maybe the force does flow through you, but you then apply your own filters that makes this come out. And then that's less the force is only used for combat, but the force yeah. is this thing that empowers you. You get a whole lot of sense from this. And it and it kind of gels with my experience with mindfulness as well, is yeah. that once you're in that flow state, you have control over the kinds of things that you're drawing out of the environment. And... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that when I'm practicing sparring as well, the background does fade away because I'm in the flow state that is really drawing on what is my, how is my partner moving right now? Not necessarily caring about like, you know, I have a general sense of like, oh, I'm walking towards a wall right now or where are other people in this room? But it, there's, there's less, less, much less specific than the person right in front of me. I have a thought. Can I bring in an example from the third episode of Ahsoka? No. <laughs> <laughs> so with the Force, there's an emphasis on feelings. Like, what do your feelings tell you? Or, I mm. feel the good in you, Father. Things like mm. that. And she's training Sabine, and she mm. blindfolds her, and she tells her, mm. feel my intention, feel where I'm going to strike. So mm. I feel like keeping all of that in mind and how the force has been presented it's less it's less the threats get highlighted and more you feel what your enemy is intending mm -hmm. and you respond to it that's I, I i like that but also it's a little bit guns don't kill people people kill people well, and yeah. in <laughs> the end <laughs> how are you how were the jedi well i guess if we're gonna if we're gonna count ahsoka 
how yeah. how do we count the Clone Wars when the Jedi are fighting against droids and sensing the intention of these mechanical beings? Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Maybe it's because droids are people, Stuart. <laughs> um one more thought to kind of throw out there from my end um is i think i while we've been talking about this thinking about it more is if if the force gives you tunnel vision and it tells you what the threats are Mm. the times that it doesn't do that it makes the force seem more present in the journey itself and if the force can't do that why does the force now not now not see the I'm so sorry. Get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) So so if the force is able to tell you what the threat is in this situation, why can it not always do that? Because uh, why does the force sometimes have a blind spot? Mm, Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Because the force has always been about like, well, not always. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking as if I've always been a fan, I, the way I've, I've always seen the Force is um, when it, like you're making the decisions. So, when, mm. like, why would there ever be a dark side Jedi if a, 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 a well, someone who uses the dark side of the Force if they can know that something is going to harm them? Mm. Because it is about mm. the, yes, you do have a connection to the Force, but you have your own choices. And what you do with those sources is up to you. Mm. And the force giving you a tunnel vision on what the enemy is seems like you don't have a choice. It's telling you what the issue is. Yeah. I am going to enjoy listening back to this in the edit. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's always fun to talk about the force because it's rarely clearly defined and often conflicting. (laughs) Yeah. It seems like everybody has their own interpretation. And also to... uh, to what's or something the Stuart, what Stuart said uh, is the force a combat thing? I think it's very unclear what the force is originally. When mm. the universe first popped up, and species were first forming, what it, something was force sensitive, and what did they do with it? Yeah, like you know yeah. the Yasalamiri, yeah, they gave off the force, but why? What did that help them in some way? It only got them eaten by Vorgeguns, as far as we know. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's kind of makes me think of like, you know, the first person to feel the force, you know, what do they do with it? It's like, right. you know, the first person to like, you know, tie a, a rock to a stick, you know, and then they immediately like go beat up their, you know, the person next to them. It's like, is that what they did with the force? <laughs> do they just like, like oh, I can feel the force, and then they like, you know, push them off a cliff or something? That's the first force action and dark side action. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like Prometheus? No, not Prometheus. Who was the one who gave fire? Prometheus. Yeah, that's Prometheus. Yeah, that's Prometheus. Was it Prometheus? Where was it yeah. like? Was was the Force Prometheus and species were in a dark world, unable to protect themselves from higher predators that were yeah. given the Force to protect themselves? Mm. Wait, Prometheus was the first one to get fire from the gods, though. Prometheus yeah. is the one who gave fire to the people. Yeah, yeah, stole it oh, from the stole, Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they t- chained him to a rock to have his liver eaten every day. Who's the one who are, who forever pushes the rock up the hill? Sisyphus, yeah. Oh, yeah, Atlas was the guy with the world yeah. on his shoulders, yeah. But why does he do that, though? I forget why he does that. <laughs> <laughs> what is his punishment? Well, we know what his punishment is, but why is he being punished? I forget. He... He was either a background character or I just forget. <laughs> Hang on, give me a second. Uh, uh, he betrayed Zeus's secret by revealing the abduction of Agena, the daughter of the river god. Oh. He also cheated death several times. <laughs> okay. Neat. I respect him. <laughs> Oh, man. How terrible is it that a lot of ancient... Is it Greek? Is it Greek, right? Yeah, Yeah. this is Greek. That, you know, Zeus is just this dirty (laughs) hornbag and (laughs) punishing people that won't go along with his objectification of anything and everything that moves. 
anybody that wants to stand up to the man to, you know, me too, the situation is just turned into a, turned into a flower, turned into a minotaur, chained to a rock. This kind of applies to a lot of religions. <laughs> yeah. Out of rocks. Yeah, a lot of rocks. <laughs> Religions and their rocks. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Back to Star Wars. Star Wars. Real quick, I just want to also throw out Cassandra, who was, who was a prophet, uh, who was uh, fated to never have anyone believe what she said. Yeah. <laughs> we, we took a siege on Troy, and you know she was cursed with nobody believing her. <laughs> we love you, Cassie. We believe you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, going back to Star Wars real quick, I just wanted to bring up because it got brought up again. I thought it was really stupid the first time it was brought up in the first book when Luke was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about mine, about my identity. It really feels like it's against the force. <laughs> and then this time, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> uh, he was talking about how as a Jedi, he can uh, always see both sides in an argument, which makes him really bad at politics. And it really just makes <laughs> me feel like he'd be like one of those people who's like, to play devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jedi and politics. <laughs> what yeah, a combination. I... <laughs> <laughs> Although, honestly, I, I don't know. I, I feel like Jedi would actually be very good at politics if they were good at being Jedi. I think, you know, that's the thing about the seeing both sides of the story is that usually it's whoever sees both sides first gets to spin it how they want. And then the other mm-hmm. side has to defend. And that, like, that's what Fale- failure I'm guessing is going to be doing as well is like, yes, we stopped the star destroyers taking out our capital ships but we also destroyed them in the case. And so it's whoever can spin the narrative first of like, yes, but you destroyed all of our ships. All of our shipping capacity is now gone. That like That's the story. Or is the story that they wouldn't have been there in the first place because they got taken out. And I feel like politics is a lot about who has the first story, who has the best story. Fair. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh that that I get that same feeling that Kyle's describing when uh, Lando was like, "He's the guy that took down Darth Vader," and then internally Luke is just like, "Well, I didn't kill him, but I guess I did win that duel." And like, he didn't even say that he killed Darth Vader; just that he took him down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Well, did I really? I, I like, I was there, but I, I'm not culpable for my actions." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just yeah. reminds me of like Mara saying, "You, you killed the emperor. You murdered him. You assassinated him." And he's like, Look, "I was just in the room. That was Darth Vader. I like, <laughs> I didn't do anything. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is is." <laughs> 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 yeah so that's why I, I feel like luke is just a bit yeah <laughs> i do really like luke and lando as a duo <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah yeah. because i, I mean we can see that yeah because we can see that luke gets lost in those details and murkiness and lando just mm. revels in it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah. yeah, Lando's just a fanboy. He's like, "Oh yeah, this is Jedi Knight." <laughs> he's Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight, and just like in that other chapter where he got shot, yeah. he's like, "You know, he's Jedi with or without the Force. He'll come through." Yeah, you know. see, like they're on. I think they're on the same wavelength, but Lando just owns it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lando is like Luke is like, "Yeah, that's not technically true," and Lando is like, "Yes, this is not te- nothing. I say is technically true." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Yes, technically>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel like lando is very ends justifies the means yeah mm. i feel like that's where luke's morality is going because yeah. also he's like well i wasn't the one that killed darth vader you know no crime was technically committed here despite <laughs> all intentions to steal star destroyers and, right. <laughs> and whatnot. yeah so like <laughs> i just remember that in this chapter he's like 
he shot at us, but he technically didn't hit us, so no crime was committed here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not sure what Luke is. Luke is very confused. <laughs> yeah. He is very, very confused. <laughs> yeah. So is Lando a good or bad influence on Luke? I'm going to say good. <laughs> because Luke clearly thinks in this space. And I think... He needs someone to give him some focus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a good way to put it. He may not make the same decisions or judgments as Lando, but um, he can learn to <laughs> see things similarly. Yeah. Uh, also, I think Luke, you know, it, he is he is a farm boy from a outer edge planet. I think he needs more people in his life who are more street knowledge i mean he definitely needs more general yeah. knowledge as well but if yeah. he's you know when he's out there like yeah he's dealing mostly with you know smugglers and stuff like that and he needs more of like street knowledge because th this battle wasn't ended with fighting it was ended as a business deal yeah <laughs> he's threatening yeah. business deal and he's like i'm gonna do you a favor next time i see you <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Right, but I mean, still, it ended with no death, which is seems like the Jedi thing. No, yeah, no. I think it's always preferred when combat is ended with discussions. Should Lando be space I'll, pope? I'll keep that in mind when uh, I'm DMing for us at uh, some point in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember Kyle's guy's preference for every combat to end in some sort of round table discussion. <laughs> uh, that, that, that does, I did want to ask, like, looking at these things, that Luke is the inheritor for the Jedi and comparing that to Leia as well, because it occurred to me as we were talking through you know, the entire last book, that Leia is a child soldier mm. Mm -hmm. and was indoctrinate, indoctrinated into the rebellion at, you know, probably as young as she can remember with Bail Organa being uh, her her father and right. re rebel from the instigation of the Empire. So does that actually make Leia quite a bad candidate, actually, to be a Jedi, having mm. been a child soldier? I don't think so, actually. Yeah. Because I would feel like she would be kind of tired of violence. Mm. I feel like she kind of has a, a perspective of both sides in that case. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen the look in her eyes when she shoots a gun? I think she likes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She's got a blaster. She's totally in her element. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. It that's is true. That's when the blood kicks in. Yeah. <laughs> I think she would know the need to do what's right at any cost, but mm. she would be a very interesting Jedi, kind of a renegade, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Doing right at any cost, though, that's uh, that's a uh, yeah. fascist calling mm. card. It is, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, in Attack of the Clones when Padme is talking to <laughs> yeah they, they, they have the picnic and she's like well that's what we try to do we sit down and find what out what's best for everybody and then what if everybody can't meet the discussion well somebody should make them <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. she would be a very interesting Jedi don't quite know how I feel about it now <laughs> yeah I'm I'm a little bit remiss actually that we're probably not going to get that interesting tension now because of yeah. the kind of walls that Disney has put up around the the story or the particular landmarks that they've laid. We're, we're not going to have that. What happens when Leia becomes a Jedi and isn't the Jedi that Luke is? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, I wonder yeah. how that happened in the uh, expanded universe, which we might get into. Yeah. I, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Rise of Skywalker. 
<laughs> Any last thoughts on the chapter? Oh, no, I'm happy. I'm happy with this discussion. Please keep shadow demons away from my house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just upset by them. Thought of them. Luke should intern with Lando. It sounds like the thing. If you wake up, like it's like when you see it in the corner of your room, that's what you're seeing. Like that's right. what I'm seeing here. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Do you think Timothy Zahn experiences those sleep paralysis demons? <laughs> Timothy Zahn had a night terror before you move out this chapter. <laughs> <laughs> and what plans do you leave it, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> this has been the Lost Holocron. You can find transcripts, links to discussion, and more at our website, lostholocron.com. While you're there, you can learn how you can support the creation of future episodes. Read on and we'll be waiting for you in the next transmission. We would be honored if you would join us.